Rob presents to you a JT After Dark Hardcast in the Sacred JT. Alright, everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Horror After Dark Podcast in the Sacred JT. You know the drill. Hop in, we talk about movies while we fucking hang out in my bed. So, funnily enough, that that is me doing Meatwad's voice. I've had a few subscribers and friends ask me. <laughs> If those are samples, no, it, it, that, that's a little door in the voice. <laughs> it's the only imitation I can do, and <laughs> that's why he's the loose person on this podcast. So, this film that I want to talk about, The Entity, from 1982. Now, again, with years, it's always the same way. I, I've seen this as 83. It's 82. It was released in 82, and it was adapted off of a novel from 78 of the same name by, um, oh, what the hell's the guy's name? Who, who cares? Doesn't matter. Directed by Sidney J. Fury, which I don't know anything else he's done. I'm looking now, and I don't see much. Or at least stuff that I've seen. So the entity is pretty much like the horror film that he's known for. And this film is and book is based on an actual case from 1974 of this woman, Doris Bither, who claimed that she was repeatedly sexually assaulted by an invisible presence or ghost or entity, whatever you want to call it. We'll call it the entity. That's what we're going to refer to it as because the title of the damn movie is The Entity. So this woman was apparently raped by an entity in a real case. And that's what led to this story. And Barbara Hershey in this movie is absolutely fantastic. Her performance is so good in this. You could feel the pain she's in, her confusion, her that she feels like she's losing her mind. All of that is handled so well in this because how many people are, believe you or believe somebody when they, even if they just say, I saw a ghost or my, I, I live in a haunted house, how many people believe that? How many people are going to believe you when you say, my house is haunted and I'm getting fucked by the ghost? No one. <laughs> Is believe in you. That's got to be a terrifying situation to be in. I mean, Barbara Hershey, like I said, does such a phenomenal job. And she was uh, married to David Carradine for for several years, if I recall correctly. And, I mean, unfortunate they divorced, you know. But at least that was something for Carradine that didn't end with a belt. So, he won out on that one. Not so much later on in life. <laughs> But I kid, I love David Carradine. Unfortunate. What people will do for an orgasm. So let's dive into The Entity from 1982 and talk about this insane movie, man. Now the score in this movie is fantastic. Especially the real intense, like almost industrial type sound that we hear whenever she gets attacked and sexually assaulted by the entity. That like <laughs> sounds so good. Like it's intense. All the scenes where she gets raped and, and, and assaulted by the entity are very disturbing, are very tense. This movie has a very dark atmosphere to it, and I really love it. Like, it, this has such a unique atmosphere, this movie. And, I mean, it's again, it's not like something that you hear or see often. You don't hear about many people claiming to be molested, sexually assaulted by ghosts. And you don't see it in films. Except for the one thing I'm thinking of now, and was it from Scary Movie? When she's getting fucked by the ghost, yeah. <laughs> That's absolutely hysterical. But serious-wise, you don't see a movie like this. And this would never be made today. This movie would not be made today. I don't know why this is coming up so much <laughs> recently. But, well, not recent. I mean, this first came up in my video for the Innkeepers months ago. But came up the other day. Now, of course, what happens to this woman is, is, is absolutely dreadful and terrible in this movie. 
But when I came, thought of this stupid thought, it was during the innkeepers when the ghost there, her legend is it said that she's looking and haunts the place. She's looking for a new lover. I'd fuck the ghost. Like, come on, man. Like, just for a story. Like, I like to wake up with a story. Judge, live your own life. Have sex with a ghost? Come on. Nobody will ever be able to top you with stories at a party, at a water cooler, ever in your life. Same with, like, a, a, a fucking a dwarf or, like, a bearded woman. I'd do any of that. <laughs> Just for the experience, just for the, the bragging rights. I don't know how much you can brag about that. But you know what I'm talking about. Wake up with a nice story, man. Live life. It's short. I just saw this movie again several months ago. And I, for some reason, I, was, I didn't do a video on it. So I have seen it recently. There's something weird with the, the sun and... What the hell's the main girl's name? Carla. There's a weird relationship between them, like borderline incestuous. Like, almost. It's a very strange relationship, and I'm going to have to see exactly, again, like how it plays out. But there is definitely some weird shit in this, in this family here. And here we get the first attack from the entity. And it's disturbing as hell with that industrial music kicking in, the way it's shot with the light falling over, with the pillow over her head that she's been smothered pretty much, and just her being, you know, thrusted back and forth by this invisible entity. It, it's very disturbing. It's very effective. And then just her scream after that is, is, is bone chilling because she has no idea what the hell just happened to her. But come on, yo, this woman, she's, her son runs in the room after the attack when she screams. And then her two ki her daughters, she has two daughters, they run in too. And then she starts screaming to the son, he's in the room, he's in the room. I mean, yeah, I, there was a pillow over her face. But she she didn't see anybody. She doesn't know that it was it was an invisible person that was just raping her. I don't know, like, oh, all of that. It doesn't really matter, but still. Don't you just hate in movies, and or in real life, when people do this to you? When they something crazy happens to you, or maybe you're just, like, exhausted, maybe you've been up for five days on a bender, <laughs> and someone says to you, it says, no, not, whatever happened to you, they say, no, it didn't happen to you, it was just a bad dream. And you know you were awake. That is so infuriating. <laughs> there is nothing. There is very little on this planet that's more infuriating to me than that. If someone says to you that you had a bad dream. And you know your ass was awake. Oh, that's so frustrating. So, like, what do you do after that? Like, me, just from ex like experience with anxiety. I'd be fearing every second that this is going to happen again. That all of a sudden my legs are going to be spread open and I'm going to be pulled down on the bed and then I'm going to be raped by a ghost again. Like, I give this I give this woman props for keeping her composure as long as she does. This movie has pretty good cinematography too. It doesn't, it's not excellent. It's not, it's not very, very, very good. But for a film from 82... And I'm I'm not sure what the budget was on this. I I think it was under under ten million. I can't picture it being more than that. But for the budget and for eighty two, it this it looks good. The cinematography looked looks very good here. Again, fantastic, no, but it does look. It's a good looking film. Now let's go to our good friend Meatwad with the weather. Meatwad, what's the weather like in New York here? Well, Jason, the weather will be like 51 degrees Fahrenheit, and I'm just hanging out with my, my door can banana. I'm just hanging out in Jersey with Frylock and Master Shake. And we'll just have a good old time. We're going to go play fetch with my dog. I love playing fetch with dog. All right, well, that sounds great, Meatwad. But I'm going to have to break some bad news to you. It's just not working out with you with the news. What do you mean? It's just not working out. 
we're gonna have to replace you. I'd still love to have you on the, on the podcast. We'll have to just find a different job for you. Oh, I'm really good at different things. Like I solve mysteries. I like to do puzzles. I really love puzzles. All right, me brother. All right, we'll talk to you soon. All right, talk to you soon. Oh, I feel bad letting him down. So then the house starts shaking like crazy, and I love movies like this that the main character's sanity is called into question many, many times here. Her son never sees anything. Her daughters never see anything. So they are just looking at their mom going nuts in their eyes until I think near the end, like the son finally sees like proof, like at some point in the movie. But until then, all you can think is that your mom's losing her mind and you're watching her just mentally degrade in front of you. And that's terrifying too, from a a kid's perspective. I mean, the older one, the the son, he looks like maybe he's 18 or older, an adult, but still, it's your mom. Now, I've never really read up on the actual case of what happened to this real person in real life with the whole her being sexually assaulted by an entity. I don't know the details of the case. It's something maybe I'll look into. I don't really care, to be honest. Like as as much as as much fun and stuff that ghost rape can be. <laughs> it's just, it's just a behind the scenes for a movie that I I just don't care to to find out about like whatever mental illness this woman had or whatever happened to her it wasn't a fucking ghost that's just how i feel i'm a skeptic and i don't care what happened to her so carla confides in her best friend i guess cindy that she was raped doesn't mention by an invisible entity though (laughs) i feel like she's leaving leaving important details out there she asked, did you call the police? She says, no. She says, why? Um, I don't know. The fact that there was nobody there <laughs> to arrest. I mean, I was just going to comment and say that if you, ghosts, if they exist, like, don't you think they have a lot of time in their hands? But don't you think they got more stuff to do? Uh, but then I thought, you know, like, you know, got guys in, 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 in normal life that are just horny as rapist motherfuckers. So, of course, there's going to be some ghost rapists out there, too. To quote a favorite comedian of mine, you can't get offended by anything I say in this video about ghost rape because ghost raping isn't real. Yeah, back to the cinematography, like, there are some cool exterior shots and stuff. Like, when she's parked in the, it seems like the desert, and the sunset behind them and everything. Really cool shots. And before we continue, let's get a word from our sponsor, Butter's Creamy Goo. Jim Rome here. Hey, I love Sarcastaball just as much as the next guy, but sometimes it's so thrilling, I need an extra burst of energy to get me through a game. That's when I reach for a bottle of this. Butter's Creamy Goo. You'll be filled with feelings of good tidings and be nicer than a ray of sunshine. Like me! Get with it and get the goo. Butter's Creamy Goo is chock full of all the essentials an athlete needs. Commitment, compassion, and camaraderie. And now it's available in quart size. Now I'm back in the game. Go and chug a bottle of Butter's Creamy Goo. Best served just above room temperature. And thank you again for that from our sponsors, Butter's Creamy Goo. Chug a bottle. Make yourself the best sportsman you could be. It contains a secret ingredient. We can't even disclose what it is. This is cum. Oh, man, I love the score. I love that industrial, intense you know, music that comes in every time something intense happens. It sounds so good. And it's not your traditional score. It's not your traditional type of composition for a horror film, especially like a, a ghost film, you know, possession film, demonic film, all that type of genre. So then after a whole big event in the house again and the family freaking out then she goes uh to sleep over her friend cindy's house and they end up sharing a bed because she's an actual nice friend share a bed you know let somebody sleep on a couch or a floor douche bed and yes i mean you listener in particular there's some great suspense in this film too like when she's in the bed and she can't fall asleep of course and 
cool lighting and stuff like we see the shadows of the leaves and everything that are banging up against the window and the shadows of the leaves are like washing over her face while she's laying in bed some really cool shots here and then we see the heat lamp that's off it goes on and then it turns it back off again so poltergeist likes to play his poltergeist games just like in every goddamn movie that has a poltergeist or a ghost they got to do stupid shit first moving stacking chairs and moving objects for no reason before they can really start doing what they gotta do then her car gets possessed and just starts swerving all over the road she can't break and stuff so this entity can follow her wherever it seems what do you call a ghost that rapes people the entity what do you call an entity that doesn't rape people some dead dude real insecure about his erectile dysfunction. <laughs> so then we have this doctor that she goes to see. And I remember that he's just a, a dick. And he doesn't mean to be. He's a doctor. So of course he's looking at everything scientifically. He's looking at everything psychologically. And he doesn't believe in ghosts. So he's he really starts pushing Carla in this movie to start really just like believing in shit that's not happening to her for that this is all a manifestation this is could be sleep paralysis a million different things does not believe that this is an entity in any way shape or form and he's trying to hurt her and he f he ends up like really becoming enamored with her and having a relationship with her not a, it's more one-sided I mean he's always after her Kind of like the entity. He ends up hurting her a lot more than trying to help her like he thinks that he is. And she tries everything in this film to try to figure out what's going on with her and try to combat this entity, including in the end, we know she does this, involves herself in this huge paranormal experiment to try to destroy or send back the entity. The whole bathroom scene is really disturbing and really intense when she's taking a bath and she's trying to stay calm and then the entity comes again and she's, the way that it's raping her man like <laughs> it's real fucked up like she's getting thrusted from behind and, and, and her face is like going into the shower curtain and the way it's filmed and then she stands straight up her legs are spread open like it's really 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 disturbing stuff and like I said earlier that she tries everything in this movie here's one thing you're gonna try chastity belt boom problem solved <laughs> no more rapes from the entity like you know those old chastity belts that like the old Celts and uh, Nordics and stuff like that would put on their, their wives when they would go off on journeys and stuff like that to make sure that they wouldn't fuck any other guys and they have like a big ass padlock key to open the belt up. Shove that on her. Boom. No problems. Bob's your uncle. You're done. But nobody thinks like me. So, <laughs> so interesting here when she's talking to the doctor again how she says that for the attack in the bathroom that it seemed like there were two other entities there with the main one that was raping her and that the other two were seemed smaller they felt smaller like grabbing her legs and spread her legs open like there was one on each on each side one holding each leg so now there's three of these <laughs> there's three entities that are raping and accomplices to rape what a crazy movie man he tells her he wants he prescribes her tranquilizers and says i want you to take these uh two of these at night and then says i want you to go home and take a nice bath did you just hear the story she told you about the bath earlier you tell this woman to get in a bath again what's wrong with you you sick man he ends up driving her home from the hospital where she visits him the doctor i guess she never went home and again it's so weird his relationship and the way that he gets so enamored with her it's his patient but yet like he goes to the ends of the earth <laughs> at the end of this film to try to like get her into his life and so it's, it's such a weird dynamic between the, the doctor and her 
And then we find out that she was molested in some way from her father. When she's talking to her, to the doctor, she says that she's talking about her father and she's saying that he used to hold me in a way that you're not supposed to hold a daughter. And he says, why, what do you mean? And she said, you know what I mean. So she's, and the mom, her mom knew about it and didn't say anything or something like that. So she has a lot of sexual repression, a lot of issues in that department. So this just feeds into the doctor's whole theory that she's crazy, <laughs> that she's imagining all this, that there's no entity. She doesn't believe, he don't believe in this stuff. And there has to be a psychological reason for what's happening to her. Uh, then she ends up getting attacked by the entity of rape right in front of her son. And he he now knows that something's going on because he's screaming, get off of her, get off of her. And then the son, Billy, he gets like zapped with electricity and it looks all right. I mean, for 81, 82, doesn't look bad and because of that whole attack on Billy. His uh, wrist is broken and not even just which this woman, you know, raped and abused sexually by her father but she also got knocked up real early like as a teenager pregnancy and there was like a big violent sudden death of her husband so man this woman has a lot of baggage she went through some shit no wonder why the entity's paying her a visit she's trying to release some stress and then she has some dickhead boyfriend jerry who doesn't believe a word of anything that's happening to her. I can't stand this character. And he's like always on the road. So And he just came home and she's so happy to have him back dealing with all of this. And then he's like, I'm leaving again. Like <laughs> He's just piecing out again. And now she's like, shit, I'm going to be alone again with my friend, the entity. So we get a masturbation scene here. She's laying. Nice lighting and stuff with the window shades. The shadows going across her face. But she can't even masturbate. She feels terrible. Like it just reminds her of the trauma she's going through from this entity. Man, that sucks. You can't even pleasure yourself without being traumatized. So much so that she proceeds to start breaking shit all over her room. So now the doctor, Snyderman, has this obsession with her. Wants him, wants her to commit herself into the hospital. And the way that he's saying that he can have her committed, even against her will, by saying the car accident when the entity attacked her, that's a suicide attempt, and that he can have her committed by the end of the day. And they could do that, and that's so screwed up, man. And then we get a whole cool scene here between Snyderman and Carla with him saying that, you know, people used to believe in the supernatural. Showing her drawings of like goblins and fairies and that these are things of folklore and fairy tale, but they were based in truth and it was a lot of it had to do with mental health or that people had sleep paralysis. They would think that people is, you know, something is sitting on their chest when they wake up, which sleep paralysis, man, if you've ever had that, I've only maybe twice, three times in my life experienced it. What a terrifying feeling or that you could see things, hallucinations, you can see things in the corners of your eye that aren't really there because of all this trauma. This guy is running the gamut on every possibility to explain this, to explain this entity that she thinks and is attacking and raping her. And then the other group of doctors, one of them says that her whole Thing that she, she masturbates often that because of all the trauma she's gone through and stuff that this is creating like a, a mass hysteria on a small scale like between her whole family her her son and her daughters and they're all believing in this entity because she's projecting her delusion onto them which again is fucking wrong she's telling the truth now she calls in some paranormal investigators or whatever the hell they are to try to gather evidence here and to prove that this is real what's happening to her. So the two of the paranormal investigators, they're witnessing this phenomenon with Carla and that the entity appears and that it has all this blue lightning and electricity coming off of it. And after that whole thing, she thinks that the entity is now, it's gone. 
that they got rid of it. And man, she is so happy. She is so elated. And it sucks that it's, it's not over yet. So now she feels reassured that these paranormal investigators, and they bring the footage that they took pictures of with the electrical currents to this woman who's like the head paranormal researcher. And at first she thinks it's a hallucination. And they're like, how can you photograph a hallucination or a delusion? And so now she wants to run some more tests and try to figure out exactly what's going on. And Snyderman is still trying to get her to, to still see him. She doesn't want to see him because she has people who actually believe in her and believe in her story, which he does not. Elizabeth Cooley is the uh, head woman of the paranormal stuff. Snyderman even goes and questions Billy, the son, and accuses him of lying for his mom. And he's saying, like, yo, I didn't lie. I'm not making this up. Like, something was there in the room, and it broke my wrist. And then she tries telling her husband, Jerry, who's back again, and says that she was attacked. And he even says, for a second, I thought you were really attacked by someone. When she says that, like, he wasn't there. Like, he was there, and then he wasn't there. So now she just sounds crazy to her husband, too. The whole scene with her get completely naked on the bed. Like, completely, totally naked. Bush out, all that. And she starts getting raped by the entity when Jerry, her husband, is there. And he doesn't know what to make of it. He's freaking. And the effects work here is so great by the great Stan Winston, who does all the practical effects here. Like, this was pretty early on. Like, this is early 80s. Like, 81, this was filmed for bubble and blister effects that we've seen in a lot of practical effects in a lot of movies in the 80s. 82, especially 82, 83. But here, like, you see her, her breasts and stuff being, like, pulsated and, like, pushed in and stuff. Like, it looks like her breasts are being fondled by the entity. And... All of those effects look fantastic. And just the her performance, again, man, Barbara Hershey just absolutely destroys this role. Now this is where it gets a little stupid near the end here. The paranormal investigator woman and the two guys who came to her house under her, they build an entire recreation of her apartment to try to lure the entity in there and then try to freeze him like frozen helium or some shit. It's so out there. It's 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 so dumb. Like the ending to this is not that great. So the trick works. The entity ends up showing up. Uh, then the helium, whatever what helium, right? It explodes and it traps the entity in the ice. And they see it. And then it just vanishes so and then we find out at the end that carla in this story again i don't know if this is taken from the actual case but it says that she moved but that she still gets visited and raped by the entity from time to time even though it's become less frequent over the years so, did, at the end of the day, did she, I mean, so many people had best friends, like, inv imaginary friends growing up. How many, like, people always wanted an imaginary fuck buddy? With no strings attached, even no body attached, like, <laughs> I mean, whatever, it's sick, but it's a good movie. This isn't a great film for me. There's some pacing issues, for sure, like, this is a long movie, too, this is a two-hour film. I feel like a, there's a lot of ups and downs with the pace, especially between the intense scenes with all the entity assaults and stuff like that and the pra and the effects and stuff. In between there, there's a lot of talking. It can drag at times, but this is a cult classic. I mean, this is a film that was not talked about much and is being talked about more and more as the years are going on and it's a definitely like i said a very original movie and something that you would just never see made today so that is the entity from 1982 again guys 
Thank you guys for tuning in again for the Horror After Dark podcast in the sack with JT. And I will talk to you guys soon. Take care, everybody.